title of the book is Musings, The Reflections of a Burdened Mind. You know, and again, maybe you've had me during some of my sessions with artists and I said the word muse, that's where you get the word music. So when you muse, you reflect, you contemplate, you observe, nothing passes you by. The book covers a lot of areas of life, right? Local, global, you know, leadership, economics, marriage, a lot of issues. So it's, a, it's like a cocktail. The book is a compilation of my reflections. It contains a lot of stories, a lot of reflections about happiness in society, but mainly the, the, you know, the message is to invite people to a lifestyle of reflection. So I just want to educate. But mainly, the reason I'm releasing this book at this time is to encourage young people out there that their life is about reflection. Life is rich, profitable, meaningful, full, you know, result-oriented if you're looking for a result when you engage in the practice of reflection. There is nothing that happens to you that is not loaded with meaning. Good, bad, ugly. We live in a fast-paced world where everything is just happening, pam, 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 pam. And life is leaving us, but we're not living life. So there are a lot of things that are around us that we can actually... So the book is an invitation to the practice, the lifestyle of reflection. So I've written that book from a lot of places in the world. It covers a lot of things about life on my travels, things I observe globally, things I observe in some... So it touched on every aspect of life. I still use that to teach my students today in reflective leadership. The letter I wrote to the city of Jaws. I wrote that letter, if you, maybe you've never seen it, I wrote that letter to the city of Jaws, which I posted on my social media. So I used a lot of, you know, African idioms in that particular post. It was when I got to Oyo that I was asking these Yoruba people you know, to give me the full rendition of those phrases. I was traveling from Ventura in California in the U.S. to, this, to the city called Santa Barbara where a lot of rich artists live, the likes of uh, Oprah Winfrey, they live in that. So when I was traveling, I just saw that the road was exactly, the terrain was exactly like the journey from George Vaughn to Manchok, all that. I said, wow, so this is what Joss could be. And that was when I concluded that Joss, I, I write to Joss in that, in that letter as if Joss is like my girlfriend or my good friend. It was a romance. And I said, Joss, a lot of people want to own you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to own you, I just want to serve you. And I, and I said, how I wish a lot of us, even those who are indigents or settlers or whatever, we not want to own Joss, but to just serve Joss. And even if you own Joss because you're an indigent, why don't you express the ownership in terms of service?